I've moved south on the overseas highway to the town of Key Largo near mile marker 100. The town of Key Largo is the largest settlement on Key Largo, which at 28 miles in length is the largest of the Florida Keys. I'm launching my boat at Marina Del Mar, a first class resort located on Port Largo Canal. Marina Del Mar offers easy access to the lower area of the Key Largo National Marine Sanctuary, the targeted area of today's exploration. I'll be diving White Bank Dry Rocks, French Reef, the Benwood Wreck, and the Molasses Reef area. From the mouth of Port Largo, I head to the red number two marker. From red number two, it's about four and a quarter miles, 130 degrees east-southeast to my first target, White Bank Dry Rocks. White Bank Dry Rocks has seven mooring buoys and is marked by a spar. This grassy offshore patch reef with numerous scattered coral heads in 15 feet of water serves as a nursery for juvenile fish of all species. Furry sea cucumber has suction cup equipped podia on its underside that facilitate movement. They survive by creeping along the ocean floor consuming animal and plant matter. The next target, French Reef, is about one mile, 100 degrees east-southeast from White Bank Dry Rocks. French Reef is a honeycomb of caves, sand pockets, and coral canyons served by 17 mooring buoys and marked by two spars. The next target on French is near the southernmost mooring buoy in about 30 feet of water. Here at the shoreward end of a long sand pocket is Hourglass Cave so named for the unusual hourglass-like pillar that divides the cave in two. The scorpion fish blends in with the reef, allowing it to surprise smaller fish that don't recognize it as a predator. Its dorsal fin is poisonous. Notice its beautiful pectoral fins. After exiting Hourglass Cave, divers can see their diffused bubbles passing upward to the surface through the fissures in the coral. Moving seaward down the sand pocket from Hourglass Cave leads to the Five Caves area. The next site, Christmas Tree Cave, is just to the northeast in 30 feet of water. There are several mooring buoys nearby. Christmas Tree Cave is so named for the gigantic conical shaped mound of star coral that rises above this beautiful swim through. Notice that the diver ahead of me is keeping her fins up out of the sand to prevent clouding up the water. Her courtesy allows me good visibility when following her in the cave. Just to the north of Christmas Tree Cave is Sandbottom Cave, 
another interesting swim through in 30 feet of water. There's a mooring buoy nearby. I'm skipping over to the Trench and Anchors site. The anchors are about one mile, 060 degrees east-northeast from the French Spar. The fluke is all that is visible of the first anchor in a sand pocket 50 feet deep. A hundred feet due south of the first anchor is a large iron stock anchor in about 45 feet of water. A hundred yards to the northwest of the Iron Stock Anchor are a series of coral canyons appropriately called the Trench in water 30 to 55 feet deep. After heading back out to the Benwood in deep water, I'm barreling about four and a quarter miles, 215 degrees south-southwest to Molasses Reef, possibly the world's most popular dive site. Molasses Reef runs for about a half a mile, and is another classic spur and groove reef system with 28 mooring buoys to accommodate dive boats. Marked by a 45 foot tall flashing red light tower built around 1920, Molasses Reef is just inside the lower boundary of the Key Largo National Marine Sanctuary. The first target is the famous hole in the wall in 20 feet of water. Moving seaward following the sand finger next to the hole in the wall leads to a large wreck in 30 feet of water. A huge winch marks the middle of the site. The Admiralty records in Key West show that the bearings from this site to Tavernier Creek and Rodriguez Key nearly match the bearings given for the Northampton when she sank in this area on May 24, 1883. The Northampton was built in Bath, Maine in 1852. She displaced 1,073 tons and was bound for Liverpool, England from New Orleans, Louisiana with a cargo of cotton and wood staves used to produce barrels. Here again, there is no positive identification of this wreck site. Before the advent of Loran and GPS technologies, pinpointing the exact position of a wreck was little more than a guessing game. The next site of interest on molasses is the old anchor. This Woodstock anchor looks like it was manufactured in the 16 or 1700s, possibly in England.
seaward from the lighthouse, three mooring buoys mark the Molasses Secondary Reef, which drops from 45 to 110 feet in depth. Gliding close to the bottom at nearly 110 feet, this large southern stingray uses its wing-like fins to stir up the sand, exposing bottom-dwelling fish and crabs on which it feeds. Molasses Reef is a must-see for night divers. Every year between seven and 10 nights after the first full moon in August, the ocean comes alive as the corals spawn on the Florida Keys reef line. Some corals like brain coral are hermaphroditic. Its male and female components are both encased in these eggs that drift away to hopefully establish new colonies. During a coral spawning, the waters teem with tiny marine creatures not often seen. Hiding in coral crevices by day, ribbon worms feed on tiny microorganisms when foraging at night. Nearly transparent, these pelagic salps are jet propelled by siphoning water in one end and ejecting it out the other. Salps, like many other animals near the bottom of the ocean's food chain, glow at night. This is bioluminescence, the result of several enzymes interacting within a sea creature causing it to emit light. These tiny animals use bioluminescence as a means for attracting mates for reproduction, to attract other organisms to eat, and as a defense mechanism to confuse predators. The last five dive sites are wrecks close to Molasses Reef, but outside the boundary of the Key Largo National Marine Sanctuary. The final target of the day is the Bronze Pin Wreck, situated in 30 feet of water about two miles almost due west of Molasses Light. Even though the Bronze Pin Wreck is the only sandy area surrounded by a sea of manatee grass, she's a tough wreck to spot. Here's yet another shipwreck mystery. She was an 80-foot sailing vessel but her name remains unknown. The flattened out hull, twisted iron, and nearby manatee grass allow a great habitat for juvenile fish. Still, I wonder, what was the name of this ship? How many people were on board? How did she founder? A ghost ship lost in the sands of time, in the waters of the Florida Keys. I hope you enjoyed the top dive sites of the lower area of the Key Largo National Marine Sanctuary. I'm heading back into Port Largo. The dive odyssey continues tomorrow in Tavernier Creek. I've got over a hundred miles of reef to go to reach Key West. 